What's going on everybody, it's Warren. Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder. And this morning we just got the official teaser trailer for The Eternals. This is a lot more than the sneak peek trailer that we got not too long ago. This is a full teaser trailer. It is two minutes and seven seconds long. It was amazing. Visually, this movie is going to be absolutely insane. And there is a lot in this teaser trailer to break down. So let's get started. But first, reminder, only seven days left in my Stormbreaker giveaway. All you have to do is subscribe to my channel and cosmic culture to enter. This first scene that we open up on is of an ancient village. These people look like they might have just invented the wheel. Their civilization isn't that far along, and that kind of shows when the Eternals show up, because remember, the Eternals are essentially immortal. They've been alive for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. The Eternals were actually created by the Celestial Gods. In the Marvel comics, the Celestials actually experimented on the early humans. So the first humans that were made, the Celestials took some of them, experimented experimented on them and created the Eternals. From there on out, they tasked the Eternals with guarding and protecting Earth and the people of Earth. And this scene is apparently when the Eternals first get to Earth, as we can see their ship here, and we can see the people absolutely shocked to see a huge ship that is invisible come right in front of them. The first Eternals that we see on the ship are Icarus and Cersei. Icarus is looking at the window, kind of marveling at Earth, pun intended, and Cersei comes up and says, it's beautiful, isn't it? Further implying that this probably is the first time that the Eternals are arriving on Earth. Fun fact, Cersei is played by Gemma Chan. Gemma Chan was also in the movie Captain Marvel. She played the role of Minerva. Marvel thought that she was so great that she got the main role of Cersei for the Eternals. Now from here, we see a few other Eternals and get a glimpse inside their ship. We see Salma Hayek's character Ajax walking down the hall, and she is the leader of the Eternals. It looks like she walks into a room, and in that room, we get our first look at Angelina Jolie's Thena, and she looks absolutely insane. Athena is the warrior, the fighter of the group, which is very suiting for Angelina Jolie. Now, in this room that the Eternals are in, we can see several different things. We get a close-up of Salma Hayek's character and her outfit, and behind her, it looks like there could be some plants in the background. Perhaps these plants they actually put on Earth to help the humans kind of start growing trees and vegetation. Although they do kind of look alien-like, so perhaps they could be something from wherever the Celestials created them. We then see two new characters, Brian Tyree Henry's Fastos and Leah McHugh's Sprite. Now, in this scene, we see Fastos kind of manipulating something. Fastos is the Eternals' is master technologist, and although we don't really know what this is, it probably is some type of a tool or technology that he's using for something that I'm sure we'll figure out within the first two minutes of the movie. Also sitting behind him is Sprite. Sprite is kind of the playful trickster of the group and can cast illusions. And Sprite is actually an adult, but stuck in the body of a child. And although the MCU doesn't ever completely just do what the comics did, we can assume that all of the Eternals were indeed made at the same time. Then we cut to the Marvel Studios logo. And the first thing that we see is Cersei with the humans on Earth farming. She's helping them. And then we hear the voice of Salma Hayek's Ajax saying, we have watched and guided. We have helped them progress. And as she says this, we can actually see one of the Eternals' hands create water on the ground. From here, vegetation grows. So again, the Eternals were created to protect and guide the humans, and it looks like that's exactly what they're doing from the very beginning. And we can kind of see the humans progress as Salma Hayek is talking. Now, the Eternals basically helped the very first civilization evolve. And we see that. They go from a civilization that is kind of just sitting on the rocks, pitching tents, to a civilization that has its very own city with a large wall around it, and this is pretty much Mesopotamia. Or since they said they've helped them accomplish wonders, it could be one of the wonders of the world. I wouldn't be surprised if Marvel kind of worked that in there, it would be pretty clever. And as you can see in this one scene, all of the humans seem to be kneeling to them like they're gods. So there's going to be a lot of mythology from real life put into this movie, and it looks like they're going to make it to where some of the old ancient Egyptian gods and hieroglyphics that we've seen are actually the Eternals in the MCU since they are the ones that came from space in a huge giant ship and then helped them. Now, in one scene, we see one Eternal handing a very particular looking knife to somebody else. This is most likely Ajak, and I don't think she's giving the knife to another person. I think she is showing a human the knife. I think she's kind of showing them who they are. And I'm sure this knife is going to have a pretty significant purpose. And there was a leak that talked about there was a tool that Ajak has that helps her communicate with the Celestials. This could be it. But right now, we're not that 
that certain. We also get a scene where Athena is seemingly training warriors. Remember, she's the warrior and the fighter of the group. Now, if you take a look at her spear that she is fighting with, it looks like it's actually made out of some type of energy. It's transparent. It doesn't look like it's made out of something like solid gold, but one of the powers of the majority of the Eternals is energy manipulation. This is much like we saw Fastos doing in the very beginning of the teaser trailer. Athena also wears some sort of a crown on her head that has a symbol on it that I'm sure will be revealed to us during the movie. And if you look at her face, she doesn't seem to be that happy. She actually seems to be rather sad or concerned. And Thena is apparently going to have a pretty big secret in this movie, according to recent rumors. Most likely the fact that she actually has a child in the comics, actually twins. However, she gives the children away to an actual human and she keeps them a secret. And this could be her big secret here and this could be what she's upset about. She could be pregnant or she could have already given up the kids. Now, as we continue on, Salma Hayek's character says, throughout the years, we have never interfered. And here we get a few more scenes. One is of Lauren Ridloff's character, Makari. She is reading, and she is reading very, very fast because that is one of her specific abilities. She is very, very fast. She'd give the Flash a run for his money. And as you can see, she is actually on the ship. This is actually from the same scene we got in the very beginning. And it looks like she has collected just a bunch of stuff from humanity over time, from different civilizations. So it kind of looks like she's living on the ship. We have everything from ancient statues of the Egyptian periods to new lamps that actually have light bulbs in them. So this shows you their immortality. They can live for thousands and thousands of years. And it looks like for Makari at least, her goal is to learn as much as she can, even though she was a part of it all. Perhaps she could be searching for something and she has to search through the history of the people to find out. Now, as Selma Hayek says, we have never interfered. We see Cersei walking through what I'm going to call Mesopotamia, and then we see her in modern times, living amongst the people in normal clothes. Now, this is what Cersei does. This is who she is. She actually loves people. She loves humanity, and she prefers to live with the people instead of the Eternals. Now, Selma Hayek says we've never interfered. Even though they basically built an established civilization and everything is pretty much a result of them helping, but we see humanity start to kind of go at war with each other. And this is where the Eternals don't interfere. It looks like they kind of started them off and then let them go. So we kind of start to see wars here, villages being ransacked, and the Eternals basically just sit back and watch. However, then we hear Ajax say, until now. And there are a few very important scenes that we have to talk about. The first one is of Gilgamesh and another Eternal holding hands. Now, the Eternals holding hands is nice, but that's not what we're looking at here. We're actually looking at what is happening in the background. In the background, it looks like we actually see some sort of a figure. This looks like it could be a hologram or a projection of one of the Celestials. After all, we do know that the Eternals do have to communicate with the Celestials sometimes. However, in another scene in the village where some of the Eternals seemingly live, we can see one of the Eternals fighting something. It looks like it's some type of a horse because it has four legs, but it looks like it's definitely not anything of Earth. Now, it could be a deviant. The deviants are essentially relatives of the Eternals. When the Celestials created the Eternals, they also created what is known as the deviants. The Eternals are basically a perfected experiment, and the deviants are kind of where it went wrong. And in the comics, they're basically at war with each other from the very beginning. Thanos is actually a deviant himself. Thanos was born of two eternal parents. However, he inherited the deviant gene, which is why he looks all purple and weird. And who knows, perhaps Thanos is actually the son of Thena? That would be a pretty cool twist for them to throw in there. And perhaps that's why the Eternals are finally getting involved. Thanos is threatening to kill not only half the people on Earth, but half the people in the universe. It could be that or it could be other deviant threats as well. Now, something else to note about this scene is that somebody is apparently mind controlling some of the villagers. We can see all of them pull guns out at the same time and we can see all of their eyes are glowing. So somebody is definitely controlling them. The question is who? It could be one of the Eternals. We don't know all of their powers since the MCU will most likely change what their powers are, or it could be the villain. Now, another awesome scene that we see is with Cersei, Druig, and Makari. They are all levitating off of the ground and there's energy going into them and in between them. Now, what they're most likely doing here is forming the Unimind. The Unimind is created when several Eternals come together and join their will and intelligence. They come together and create one giant being created of light, mind, and pure 
energy. This is going to be absolutely crazy to see on scene, and it looks like they're probably doing this right before they have to fight the big bad villain at the end of the movie. And then we get a few scenes of Icarus and Cersei. They definitely have some romance going on here. It looks like they start out as a couple, and then they end up eventually getting married. As we can see here, it definitely looks like a wedding ceremony. And it looks like they're together for a pretty long time. However, it does look like we're going to have a love triangle here, because we know that Cersei is also going to be involved with Dane Whitman, aka the Black Knight, played by Kit Harington. And we actually do have a scene here with Cersei and Kit Harington. It definitely looks like more modern times, so maybe her and Icarus end up breaking up, or who knows. Then we get a pretty awesome scene of Camille Nanjiani's character, who is a Bollywood star. He is living among the humans and sort of hiding in plain sight, and he's clearly made a pretty good life for himself. Kumail Nanjiani actually talked about a huge Bollywood dance scene that they did, and it looks like they show us some of that in this trailer. And then of course we get the awesome scene on the cliffside where we see all of the Eternals fully dressed in their Eternals outfits. From the left to the right, we have Kumail Nanjiani's character Kingo, Lauren Ridloff's character Makari, Ma Dong Sok's character Gilgamesh, Angelina Jolie as Thena, Richard Madden as Icarus, Salma Hayek as Ajak, Jimma Chan as Cersei, Leah McHugh as Sprite, Brian Tyree Henry as Fastos, and Barry Keegan as Druig. And those are the Eternals. Now, we have one more scene left that kind of answers a question to an extent that a lot of people have been having, which is, where exactly were the Eternals during the events of Thanos? We have what looks like most of the Eternals sitting down at a table with a very nice spread that looks like it was provided by Gilgamesh. Icarus looks up at Gilgamesh and says, thank you for this, and he says, you're welcome. And then Sprite poses a question to the Eternals. And that question is, so now that Captain Rogers and Iron Man are both gone, who do you think's going to lead the Avengers? So they definitely know who the Avengers are. So it does seem like they were monitoring everything, but why didn't they interfere? Was there some other threat that they had to deal with at this point in time? We are definitely going to get the answer to that in this movie. However, it does look like some of the Eternals, if not probably most of it, takes place after the snap. The reason being is because in this scene, Kingo, who was the famous Bollywood star, has a character with him who is not an Eternal. We saw this character in the teaser trailer holding a camera, so it's either his cameraman and or assistant. This means that this scene at the end, where Sprite asks about the Avengers, takes place before the Eternals are kind of coming back together and reforming their group to take on whatever threat is threatening them. So their major threat, the one that Ajak was saying we've never interfered until now, is happening after after Captain America and Iron Man are gone, which means it's happening after the snap. And then of course the final scene is of Icarus saying, I could lead them, I could lead the Avengers. Angelina Jolie kind of rolls her eyes and everybody starts to laugh. And that's the Eternals trailer. And Marvel's really treating us with their teaser trailers. Their teasers are pretty long, over two minutes. And they packed so much into this teaser trailer. It was awesome, but let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. And let me know if you have any questions about it as well. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date on all things related to the Eternals and the MCU. Don't forget to hit that like button. And for live updates, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.